stewardesses were glamorous. They were beautiful. They were poised. It just looked like the world was theirs, and I wanted that life. I just can't wait to see all the places I've heard so much about. Paris, Rome, Bangkok, Buenos Aires. How many small town girls like me looked at a flight attendant and thought, that's the best job in the world? Rosemary, I'd like to talk to you about your coffee service. You've been pouring from too high. No other job offered as much freedom with such a high cost of conformity. We were not expected to have opinions. We were to serve and look glamorous. Where is the stewardess where a woman wants a, ha, ha? Nowhere, busy with the men. Coffee, tea, what you will, hello, hello, hello. Hey, uh, how about some coffee? And make it hot. Selling sex instead of safety. Mm. Mm. Oh, excuse us. Remember what it was like before there was somebody else up there who loved you? Remember? I hated that. Airlines hired these women who were independent and curious. And it's amazing to me that airlines would expect that they would be a docile group, because why would they be? TWA has been shut down for more than a month by a strike of stewards and stewardesses. I don't think we realized what a revolutionary thing we were doing. Stewardesses played a major role in launching the women's movement. They took up economic issues, but they also focused on issues having to do with appearance, grooming, and the control over women's bodies. How did these women go from conforming to gender stereotypes to fighting for gender equality in the workforce? I was a TWA flight attendant, but I was an activist in the change. I was there. One of my best friends, she had a brother who bought this Corvette. We would be out on the road, and she'd say, well, where do you want to go? And I would say, let's go to the airport. When I was in high school, I convinced my friend Nancy that we should go on a trip when our junior year ended. And that June, off we went. I shopped for a week for the outfit I was going to wear on the flight. My first flight, I was about eight or nine. We were all dressed up. Socks with the little lace all around the edges of it. I thought, this is just like Easter. I'd been on boats before, and I thought, well, this was going to be similar to a boat. When we started to roll, oh, this is more like a roller coaster. I remember the takeoff. I remember playing with the air. You know, I had my own little vent, gently putting a breeze on my face. I couldn't believe when they gave me food. They put my breakfast down, I, and it was delicious. Scrambled eggs and those little sausages and a fruit plate. And I just was dazzled from the minute I stepped on that plane.
I thought, oh, this has to be what heaven feels like. I've got to be close to heaven. It was the most beautiful thing I had experienced, just being in the air. So many of our advances as humans come from travel. It is an incredibly human impulse, and yet it was really restricted for women until the 20th century. These new technologies came around enabling humans to move around. And then women really wanted to be a part of it. Ellen Church was a registered nurse, but she got her pilot's license. She knew that aviation was the future. But because airlines refused to countenance that a woman could be a pilot, Ellen's idea was, all right, if they're not gonna let me be a pilot, at least maybe they let me be a flight attendant. In the late 1920s, you see an experimental era where some airlines are trying out different models of cabin service. The most obvious model would be Pullman porters. But there's a long-standing association between technological know-how and white supremacy. And they do not think that black people have the kind of authority to kind of help people through the challenges of flying. So the airlines thought, we probably want white men because this might be a position where you would get promoted into management. Ellen Church went to San Francisco to the office of what would later become United Airlines. Then she went to an executive and she said, I think if there were nurses on airplanes, more people would fly. You're trying to attract passengers, but people think it's dangerous, people get sick. A nurse would be a calming person and we'd be able to take care of passengers. Planes weren't pressurized, so they flew under 10,000 feet. And that means you feel every bump. It was always turbulent. There were no circulation systems, so you could smell hot oil and the disinfectant used to clean up after air sick passengers. To go from coast to coast, it took 28 hours at minimum. Often planes would get grounded in the middle of nowhere. Passengers would have to wait for several days until the weather cleared. It was really a big adventure instead of a reliable way to travel. It was a harrowing thing to fly. You couldn't get a life insurance policy to cover you if you flew on airplanes, because the death rate was something that no one wanted to insure. The idea is that if you're encouraging people to fly, especially men, at a moment when flying can seem very scary, <laughs> if you put young white women on an airplane, then they're gonna think, well, if these young white women are fine with flying, I should be fine with flying too. 